Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So this video is completely inspired by Elon Musk. Thank you, Elon. Why, thank you, Elon. Thank you for sharing. It, literally, thank you for sharing. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is fun. Let us watch this. Let us watch this. Now, there's mm, classical music playing, which probably is okay. Um, I'll give you guys the, the link. I think we should be okay with showing a link to Elon. Probably. Awesome. You never know. I mean, of course, all Gil Bates links are, are problems. But again, it's all an Anunnaki show. So he's he's got this video he's playing. And I think it's really very interesting. I wonder if we can slow it down a little bit, just a hair. Okay. It's fascinating. It, it, it's a fascinating video. I mean, it's just wow. There is so much in this video, and it like hits me immediately. I mean, every it, all these little details, the they too, they <coughs> they hit me so much. Uh, it, it's to me, you know, I, I look at this, and I know Cindy picks up the same sort of stuff, and we're immediately hit with just such clear messaging that it. It should be kind of obvious, um, and I think you guys are going to have even deeper insights that you'll share in the comments, as you see. So I slowed this down to three-quarter speed because it does go um, pretty fast. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so cool. It is cool. You know, now this is done, as you see, by WLOP, and it appears to be an artist that's... Um, part of or responsible for deviant art which puts out some real wild mythological modern day mythological um art and i mean they've they've done all sorts of stuff from alien predator type stuff to um you know doing like the the real popular video games which i can't even tell you other than uh you know like call of duty but there are some other ones out there um, that are mythological. Uh, again, I haven't played a video game in decades. Um, but I find this fascinating. There's clear messaging going on here. Elon is saying a lot. He is really saying a lot, but he always does. And people don't notice. This is the thing. Most people just don't notice. I was reading some of the comments and it's like, wow, that's beautiful. Oh, I want to get off of this this earth and, ex and experience something like this. Well, that's what Elon really is here to do. Let's give you a virtual reality uh, experience instead of um, what Mother Nature and Source and the real creator of this universe have decided to give us. So let us first go. I mean, you see these right here. The These two orangish red lights absolutely want to notice those uh, right off the bat and so she's she's playing the violin from where well up in the sky up in the sky black cube. That, I'm just yeah. saying on a black cube is what it looks like to me I don't know. I don't know what they're saying here. Well, there's they're saying a lot and there is a lot to be to be said. I'm curious what people have to say in the comments. But to me, it's today is November 4th and today Saturn is sitting in a very interesting situation with with the moon and there's a lot going on. And I do believe that the rings of Saturn I feel that they are in many ways antennas and they do work with the moon and they do send information to earth and we are in a time where karmically a lot is happening so 
there's so much happening in this video. It's telling like a, a story in just a matter of, what is it, two minutes, four seconds. It's speaking volumes about past, present, future, you know, as above, so below. It's really very beautiful. The thing is, it's I, I do feel there's some glorifying of the AI, of course, which is natural when you're a salesman, you're going to glorify your product. So I think that is being lifted up and raised up on, on a pedestal. You know, it doesn't mean that we can't look at it and be in awe, but I'm not happy that, you know, the AI is being put forward be, before Mother Earth because she's far, far uh, more advanced than AI could ever be. But this is still fun. It absolutely is. And again, it was just coming to me now that Elon Musk is like the first ambassador to Earth of the Anunnaki. That's really what he is. He's an ambassador for the Anunnaki. He's going to be the go-between. You, you probably could recognize this. This is uh, the Iberian Peninsula, and this is the boot, right? This is Italy. This would be the view from the inside out. Mm -hmm. This is inverse. So it's kind of like the view from the inside out. And I was noticing you see India and Sri Lanka and other spots. Everything is kind of inverse. Here, what do we have here? This is Saturn. And, and yeah, what Cindy was just saying, Saturn's coming around again. Saturn is karma. And they've built up a ton of karma through their manipulation of the United States and NATO. So what we're seeing is, yes, you know, again, he's he's talking about the end of one system and the beginning of a new system. And when you look to her violin itself, as she's playing here, see here you can see uh, Sri Lanka on the wrong side of the uh, Indian subcontinent. And so, again, we're looking from inside out. Uh, and it is an inside-out world. It's an upside-down world because it is also upside-down. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the f where we get to the fun stuff. So what do we have here? We have the solar system on the left. The solar system on the left. But what's this? And what's that red dot? Well, this is like a subsystem, a smaller system that's a subsystem of the solar system. So this is, re 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 basically, this is planet X, this is Nibiru. Yeah, absolutely, great call. And look at this, what do we have here? We have DNA. We have DNA, and, you know, Cindy just noticed that. W wonderful call. We have DNA between, where's DNA going? It, it's, it's on our side, but it's between the normal solar system and the planet X Nibiru subsystem, which is over here. And as you see, you know, her play, you see it move and position itself coming over this way towards the solar system. It is in our solar system right now. It, it's, it's just beyond uh, the orbital path of Uranus and Neptune. And it has to stay there. It cannot come any closer. It would cause havoc with the inner planets. So it's got to stay there. And we've covered before... In past videos how what's it what's its means of propulsion because you know contrary to what um, Zechariah Sitchin was talking about with a 3600 year orbit the reality is Nibiru is is a pretty much you could categorize it as a dead planet it is more of a spaceship at this point in time just like the moon was uh, an, a natural satellite that is not from Earth um, in fact, it was moved into position by the Anunnaki. It is a spaceship at this point in time. It, it's an operations base. It is hollow and it is um, you know, being used by various species. But you know, again, it's under the reptilian, uh, draconian Anunnaki control as we speak. And you know, it, it, it's used to monitor us and all the time. Come, let us go down there. <laughs> From where? <laughs> Well, they were here. They were here ever since they put the moon here in orbit around us. They've they've utilized it as a base, and and yet the reality is the moon is is a four fourth density object, and we've covered that uh, as well in uh, other videos. And I'm gonna give you guys. Um, I'll give you some links, but the easy way to do it is just simply search Nibiru under our. Um, 
under our channels. And so what they're what they're showing here quite clearly is guess what guys? We're here. We're on our way. We're we're here. We are coming to visit you. And uh, the planetary alignment that I'm talking about is going to go on the entire month of November. So that's something we need to keep in mind, too. I think November is going to be a very busy month. Um, there is going to be a lot of happenings, a lot of things moving into alignment. So, again, it's time for us to <clears throat> find solid ground wherever we can and prepare ourselves for things that are going to change there's going to be a lot of change going on also what hit me right away was something really kind of creepy and i hate to bring it up but you know it, it just hit me is you know on the the movie on titanic when you know there wasn't anything they could do but play these beautiful violins and play this beautiful music while the ship went down while the ship was sinking um, you know going in going from one world to another world and that that kind of struck me as curious too. why choose the violin and why have this classical music and such a, a big hit for a movie uh, for everyone to remember and then bringing it back and putting it in our subconscious. Yeah, again, you know, he could also be indicating pole shift because of everything being upside down and inside out. Um, or some damage caused by, you know, again, the control system. So <clears throat> fascinating. But yeah, I mean, how what can you possibly say about the message here? Because again, look at the violin. The violin says it all. Solar system. Clearly. And what's this little da -da 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 DNA? Clearly. Another red planet with its own subsystem. And, you know, as we watch it, it ends up heading over in our direction. It's clearly all about these times. It's clearly all about, you know, the return of the Anunnaki. And, and when we think about the Olympian gods, who, again, is they are uh, these Anunnaki beings and their offspring. This is who we are talking about. The Anunnaki are the Olympian gods, but they're not all of the different gods that are out there, quote-unquote. And none of them are gods, really. They're all extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, uh, inner earth beings, beings that live under the sea as well. They're just simply advanced beings that have more knowledge than the average earth human. They look from above. They watch everything going on from above. This is the same uh, as she's playing and she's playing uh, an instrument that is, <laughs> again, the planetary systems, both Earth's and, and Planet X, Nibiru's. They're, they're, she's playing from their perspective, up on high. Ah, kingship came from on high. Again, you know, the Bible and the Quran are psyops to give you uh, the idea that they're uh, is something different than what is the reality going on. And yet they do have the clues. Now, Saturn stations November 4th. This is Joni Petri, who is a fabulous Vedic uh, astrologer. And, you know, what she was talking about is, is, again, what Cindy was alluding to. They understand this. You know, they, the controllers understand how the universe works. They take advantage of it, and they do it masterfully because they are so far beyond us as far as technologically, and they've hidden from humanity how the universe works. They've hidden that part. When you see Constantine, get you know the pagan Roman emperor getting uh, that vision, conquer in this sign, and what's the sign? The cross. Well, you know, the cross has become the sign of Christianity, but that's not really uh, the sign of the true Yeshua, uh, Jesus. And again, Jesus is a Latinized version of, you know, the English. I, the English word would be Joshua. J you know, Yeshua, you know, would translate to Joshua. Um, and yet, what he was truly teaching is is it wasn't about him coming and being a blood sacrifice and every time we look to that cross let's look to the uh the oldest version that constantine uh would have been using this is it 
the Chiro cross, the Constantinian cross. Look at that. Wait a minute. What's what's Elon's? What's Elon's sign? Live on X. What's X? You know, again, uh, Nibiru has been called the planet of the cross, planet 10, 10 Roman numerals, X. Uh, again, why the cross and why the crossing? Because it crosses our path. It has caused cataclysm in the past. It will not be allowed to come any closer. It actually utilizes a black hole for a propulsion system. And that causes tremendous gravitational effects. And, and thus, uh, you know, they would not be allowed by the higher powers to move any closer to us to cause that type of devastation that they've already caused in the past. So we don't have to worry about that. But they're still doing all this. They're still playing the world like a fiddle or like a violin. Mm -hmm. You know, the other things that are that are coming in are things like the black sun, um, things about the world being in verse, like everything being upside down, like Mike and I were always talking about. <laughs> if you see something on mainstream and you flip it around, you're probably going the right direction at that point. So they're very, very good at turning things inside out and upside down and leading us down the wrong path. And then also our, our belief system was written by these Anunnaki beings that are sitting up there high and watching down below, probably having their, you know, their games, playing their, playing their Olympian games. But guess what? We, you know, we are the toys. We are the pawns. And I, I just, you know, I want to be in a world where I'm free and I'm sovereign and I can do what I want and not be herded around by these other beings and their technology even though fascinating fun to look at fun to watch um but you know then there's that aspect of it of ultra control i mean think about it Soundgarden, that song black hole sun that's a reference to the anunnaki mm. yes definitely there's a lot out there that are referencing black hole black sun also i forgot who who wrote it but it was really really creepy um about the black star uh wrote a song about the black star and he showed these people who looked like they were like going in a trance and i know some of you are going to remember it uh, as a singer i think he passed away but it came out i think a few years ago about the black star um and how that can change us and change our vibration and even possibly put us in a state of like zombiehood so there's just so much to be said about this little clip that good old elon put up for us he spilled all the beans in this clip he spilled it all and and it really is clear for all that could see all that can see past the indoctrination so again the chiro cross and you see clearly it's an x on there and we see the symbols and these little guys are humans and this is a anunnaki right here and you can see some hybrid uh, mythological quote unquote beings here that look to be uh half animal half human but here you go again and you know again the resemblance there is it just all a coincidence again planet x twitter x space x hello i mean it's it couldn't be any clearer and yet most people you know still are oblivious because they are so indoctrinated they can't see past their own nose and yet it is also part of the the food it's part of the fluoridation it's part of the water it's part of the poisoning it's part of the frequencies yeah as you see you know depiction of you know, I guess an opening of a black hole, and it looks like there's a red planet be beyond Saturn. Saturn, again, is all about karma. And what's coming now is the karma of the U.S. as having been utilized as the police force of the control system. Now they're going to let all the karma come down on the U.S. and NATO and, and allow the obliteration of them uh, politically as well as what you see in Gaza is what they have kind of planned. Unfortunately, unless again, we could wake people up and you could get past the you know obvious to so many that, that have smelled the coffee, the religions are created by them. This is one of their biggest tools. Doesn't mean uh, we aren't eternal beings, quite the opposite. They want to sell you on the fact that you're not an eternal being, you know, because you have to believe in one of their systems, otherwise you're going to be tortured forever. 
Now, that's not the way it really is. And no, they're just, again, using uh, programming, fear-based programming. And so, you know, again, Planet X Nibiru, it could go anywhere it wants because it is basically more of a mothership now than a planet. Yes, Sitchin was off in some things. And yes, Sitchin, you know, again, has his dubious qualities. But he's not the only person that has translated these hundreds of thousands of Sumerian uh, inscriptions. And, and that's, again, uh, a sign of somebody that is is just doesn't have uh, any idea. Somebody that's clueless when they say, well, Sitchin's been debunked, so the whole thing is... Uh, n no, you know, what about all the other scholars that have teared into this? And, and what about the hundreds of thousands, again, of these inscriptions that are, are consistently telling the same stories? But again, they are from their perspective. That's the other rub. So you're still getting the Sumerian stories are still told from the Anunnaki's perspective. They, they have a lot to say and a lot to share for anyone who, who is awake and, and able to see it, you know. But the best source of information that you can get comes from within. But they keep people so busy with the new technology and working and paying your bills and, you know, trying to get the kids to and from school. They have us doing a lot of busy work. And reality, we should be going within. And then when it comes to aging, you know what ages us is the toxins. The toxins get in our body and our body can only handle so much. So unless we know how to detox ourselves and clear out the body really well, it, it's going to age us faster and we're going to see certain diseases set in because we're lacking movement, we're lacking oxygen, we're not able to, to, to you know, break off these energies that we've been saturated in. Yeah, so when you have these famous incidents where it appears that there's more than one sun in the sky, is it was it from chemtrailing back in 1683? Was it actually a glitch in the matrix? Because, again, they already, <laughs> if we talk about Project Blue Beam, you know, fake alien invasion, Project Blue Beam, fake second coming of Christ, Project Blue Beam is also covering up or basically technology is also already covering up other planets that are in the sky and celestial objects that they don't want us seeing. They're already covering up and sometimes people catch them. Sometimes people catch them in photographs. Sometimes people have seen them with their own eyes. And, and yeah, it absolutely is real. Plus the fact that, you know, vibrationally we're changing. So there's going to be a lot more um, objects becoming visible to us. In, in reality, I think what we got from the guides, was it, was it 39 planets in our solar system? I think that's what they had said. This is the Enuma Elish. And, you know, it is the uh, creation story that talks about uh, the Battle of Marduk and Tiamat. We've covered all that before, too. So I'll give you guys, um, you know, the links again to those videos. The Epic of Creation. Now, recognize again, this is told from the people's perspective that were under the control of this very control system. So is it to be taken as complete fact? N no, but you can see, because again, all the biblical stories are rehashes of far more older stories. What they've done is instead of gods, they just made it God. They've turned everything into to Lord and, and that's it. And in the reality, it was always the plural. And it still is the plural in numerous places in the Bible. It's just that people don't understand that they've changed it to just simply Lord or God when it is talking in the plural. It should be saying the lords, the gods. Uh, again, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but sometimes the, the brainwashing and indoctrination is almost impossible to get out of their, their minds. The Noah's Ark story in, in the versus the Epic of Gilgamesh. Again, the Epic of Gilgamesh is 1,500 to 2,000 years minimum older. It's probably even older than that compared to the Bible. Again, this is where it comes from. And 
when we when we look to the flood the flood is sent by god in the bible the flood is sent by an assembly of the gods and what does deuteronomy 32 read it reads of that assembly of the gods and this this gives you that come let us go down there genesis 11 it's in you know again it's in the plural and yet you know it's it's because the people are terrified to have their belief system exposed for what it is it's just pure manipulation pure manipulation but the reality is we already have eternal life but they want to kind of trap us they you know that luciferian religion that albert pike talked about was basically believing that there's nothing past this so that you will allow yourself to be turned into a cyborg and become part human part machine and thus you know ah death where is your sting because you know your heart goes out it's okay we'll replace it with another it'll be mechanical it should last a couple of millennia you'll be fine but that's not the original purpose of an incarnation in the first place no no this is all about trapping souls it truly is in order to utilize the energy inherent in each one of us and as long as we are here in the 3D realm, in the matrix that they have created for us, they control our soul. They control our energy and our belief system. I mean, to me, when it, when people talk about a belief system, it's like the next most important thing to breathing. <laughs> it's just critical. That belief system, boy, they have a hold of it and they just lead people around by the nose and so many people fight each other they kill each other because of the belief system um, instead of going in and finding that internal love and that internal knowing uh, they continue to allow themselves to be spoon-fed you know from from the media and we're all guilty of it but we're not guilty of it because we're bad we just don't know any better but until you know better you can't really do better so that's why it's important to just kind of expand yourself yeah absolutely you yeah, know we've talked about ezekiel's wheels so many people have talked about that in reference to obvious ufo M moses you know again cloud by day pillar of fire by night pretty obvious easy to see here you have utnapishtim who was the babylonian noah what happens to him he was the only man to escape death since having preserved human and animal life in the great boat he built, he and his wife were deified by the god Enlil. He was turned into what we would call an Ajiji. This is what's promised to Gil Bates. This is what's promised to others of these people that are selling out humanity. They will be deified. What does that mean? It means they're going to become cyborgs, basically. They're, they're going to be granted eternal life but just like a vampire that can't stand the light of the sun and turns into ash and there's nothing left that's really what they're doing is they're throwing truly away everything and there's nothing when they're gone there's nothing left it's not like we leave and we take a new body later on or we move up higher into higher densities no yeah with with these beings their true source spark is absorbed by the ai and they are no more mm, and it's really horrible horrible thought but you know just that understanding and that knowing is is something that I, I i only think it's fair that anybody who wants to know should know so that they can make a decision for themselves if they want to continue down the ai path and get the newest the latest and the greatest and continue into debt or do you want to go the other way where you're free and you're able to mesh with earth and ascend with the planet I mean, everyone deserves a choice, but if we sit here and just look at the control structure that we have, well, I don't really see too many options other than one brand, but there's several sub sub brands in that one brand that that's all people know about. Yeah, common misconception, George Soros did not play Darth Sidious <laughs> in Star Wars. Darth Sidious plays George Soros yep. in real life. Yeah, and, and really when you look at Utnapishtim, what does he look like? He really does look a lot like Darth Sidious. And this is where, again, they kind of give us a little bit of uh, the truth in the movies, like Star Wars, just like they have with the Matrix, with humans being batteries. We are batteries in a way. We are energizing the AI. 
because ultimately the AI, which was created by the Draco, enslaved the Draco. The Draco then possessed and enslaved the Anunnaki, and the EGG were their uh, servants' slaves, so to speak, and humans are theirs. And this is exactly what we have on this planet. So when you see, you know, the cross of Constantine, you know, he's not out there trying to convert souls uh, <laughs> to Yeshua's teachings. No, he's he's he was out there converting people into the Anunnaki Nibiru and a, a draconian AI system. And when we think about Moses and his staff and, you know, who he's really being led by, I think this is a good representation. You know, Cindy, going back to this, was saying, look at what she's um, standing on, right? It's black, and it's a cube. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot to be said about that black cube as well, and, and it's a very important um, aspect of certain belief systems where it's, uh, uh, I guess, worshipped, prayed to, um, you know, maybe that black cube is really a spaceship that's going to come and land on this planet. So there you go. There's your black cube. Yeah. I mean, here we go. This is another representation of the Anunnaki. And so, you know, the whole world has been led astray by the beast. This is the beast system. It's Islam, Christianity. It's, it's the Abrahamic tradition is the beast system. When you're waiting for New Jerusalem to come out of the sky. It just happens to be a... It's a golden cube. Yeah, you know, uh, again, you can't make this up. It's so obvious. It's so right in our faces. And, you know, Revelation 22, everybody gets marked like part of the flock. Everybody gets uh, the stamp of ownership, just like cattle, just like sheep. So, you know, it's, it's all right there in front of us. Please help spread the word so we can stop destroying ourselves and start to realize all we got to do is recognize the system for what it is. It all goes back again to uh, Genesis 11. Mm -hmm. Which is which is always, you know, something that I think people could keep in the back of their mind. You know, if they're on this spiritual journey and they're trying to break out of the, the matrix, there's plenty of um, information that they give us. And the Lord or the Elohim said, the mighty ones, this is how it really reads, the mighty ones, the powerful ones, the one who judges, the ones who judge. Behold, they are one people. They have one language and they're building together. They're being constructive. They're actually working together. We can't have this. Let us go down there. Let us confound their language. Let us scatter them all over the globe. And they did. And, and again, this is just, it's so obvious. It's all right in our faces. Uh, it's just people can't see beyond their own indoctrination. No, it, it's really scary. I mean, just to be fair, it is really very, very frightening because when you rattle someone's belief system, you're really rattling their whole world, their whole understanding, the thing that they wake up to and go to sleep to every day. People need a solid foundation. They need to be well grounded and rooted. That way they are well nourished. And once you start to point out certain things uh it makes people nervous yeah and again when we look to De deuteronomy 32 8 it's talking about that council of the gods it's talking in, about language that's very very reminiscent of of looking at the olympian gods when the most high Elion, gave the nations their inheritance he separated the sons of man he set the boundaries of the people according to the numbers of the sons of Israel. That makes absolutely no existence, no sense, because Israel was not in existence at that time. It's a mistranslation purposefully, purposefully. And, you know, again, we, we, we've seen that because we've seen uh, different translations come up in, in different pieces of fragments. And you'll have people that think, well, we can only trust King James. Why? Because he was the head of all the Masonic lodges, you know, in, in England and Scotland. 
Oh man, it, it it's just amazing how how people have been so misled. When you, when you look, it it's sons of the gods, plural. This is what it is. And when you understand that this comes from the again the Sumerian texts, where it says the Anunnaki divided the humans up by tribes, each Anunnaki, each Anunnaki god taking a tribe for their own. There you go. And they play with us like chess pieces. Mm, sad but true. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.